give you another shot at a couple of these little flourishes that happen in the middle here. And um, well, why don't you do it first? And then, and but don't feel like you have to rush. I'd love to hear. Let's like, see the first one that's at um, after D, eight after D, seven after D. And do it at a tempo that you can feel really secure about. Um, like if you're feeling a little nervous about any of the notes or anything. I know you guys are super busy handling all kinds of repertoire, and so getting up to perform um, solo music. It's a lot at this point in the festival, week six, right? Uh, so do it at a tempo that feels really, really secure for you so that you can really put your own commitment into the shape of this little flourish here. Okay.
thing that um, I wanted to get to about these spots, um, where I was intending to go actually in the beginning, you need to watch your bow because when you start doing this fast 16th note bowing with separate bows, kind of sliding like this, sliding out like this. You keep your bow hair more flat and make sure you're not pulling back this way. Okay, I have to see you from this angle to see that. Okay. So, the, so the same thing again, you can go from the bar four now, and don't even try to play it fast, but, but keep that bow in mind, and beautiful sound on every note here.
Um, I just wanted to remind myself what the what's marked during these three pickups here, um, because this is off tempo, but the melody actually starts here, right? This is transition. I'm talking about these. Mm -hmm. way of somehow knowing that the fourth G is the beginning of this theme here. So he's marked that tempo from there, but he's marked crescendo and then piano. So I would at least try going above the piano with this crescendo and doing something really interesting with, with your sound and, and color in these three upbeats here.
work with for the Christian Women Mentor. I think there should be a little bit 
early. Can you wait a little bit later? So if you're stuck with writing triplets to yourself, start the slide after the last question. Yes, yes, good.
let's go back to the wrong circle in order to play. Um, this wrongs. I feel like I need to push you to get your bow off the string some of the time. It, it, I don't know if you're playing with me at all, um, but I, I'm getting the idea that I need to have it to stop. Stop the bow on the string in between the notes, which I'm thinking that you're probably saying to yourself right now, oh no, but I can't do it other, the other way. <laughs> Maybe, alright? Maybe. You don't have to admit. Okay, so let's just take it a little bit at a time. See if you can do that much. Okay, much better already. And I want you to notice something, Morgan. How the violin rings and it doesn't ring when you stop the bow on the string. Okay? So really good idea to get used to and get better at being able to flip the bow off the string in between things when it's appropriate to do so. So now we need a, a shorter Right again? 
Much better. It's much better. Yeah, you're smiling, so you realize that you can do even better than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but look for that. You know. So this whole passage really is going to be full of this. So now we have the added challenge of. Is that the bow you played? I can't remember. Yeah. Both. Yeah, but you did it right this way. So now we're going to have to. This is a harder technique to get used to if you've never really done it. I actually spoke with someone about this this morning, and you know who you are. I'm not going to look at anyone or mention any names. See if you can get the tip on the string with a sforzano. So it's not a placement, and then starting this way. It's more of a a slap or a whip. Yeah, and it's the it's the vertical motion that's going to give you your power. The horizontal motion is not relevant to the attack. So we're focusing in on the attack right now. So this is kind of I'm going to say whip and stick. Whip and stick. That's a good effort, you know. Like you're getting there, right? You do it over and over, and try to get it more focused and more pinpointed. Again, slap it down. Yes. If you try to place it, it's not going to be the right kind of sound. It's not going to be powerful. Whipping it down, and then remember, you don't need to press as much as you think you do after that. You do need the the bravo as as you are, but that's that's where you're going to get your intensity. All right, pretty good. And now we're back to that pose once again. Oops, but. That solo makes it sound first again. Let's come off the string again. Over to the frog. We're getting a little bit of more than one catch. Better come off the string. It's even a shorter note than that. That's better. That's better. You release a little bit of, um, you know, weight and give it a little more speed. It lifts the instrument even more. Bum bum. Many, 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 and listen to a lot of auditions. 
So, um, one of the things that comes up a lot in this excerpt is when you get to 127, this rhythm. Many people have trouble keeping this rhythm very steady. It's really important. And the eighth short, which I think you play on. Am I right? Yeah. Right, yeah. So the same kinds of things that we just worked on. But lots of people who, you know, regardless, have trouble doing this. Um, what else? Just sub subdivision in general. Um, we didn't really talk about it too much at the beginning of this, but the rhythmic aspect of this excerpt at the beginning is very, very important. And subdividing, so thinking to yourself inside. All those subdivisions, those 16th notes that you're not actually playing, but what the notes that you do play need to line up with that. And then you have those moments. If, does anybody have this music in front of them, by the way? Only one? Okay. All right. So just if, if find a way in the back of your mind. There are a few places where it's not a 16th note, but it's an 8th note. And I think you did the correct rhythm, but it's more like the stroke you really need to change your stroke. But just watch out for the rhythmic aspect of this excerpt when you all come to it. Okay, so let's go to your Copia. Um, okay. So let's assume that you realize that a lot of this needs to come more off the string um, in general as well as if, like we just did in the Bronx. Let's cut right to the terrible chase at number six. Number six is this. The dreaded spot, right? And the second time is even harder, by the way. You know, this is the one that's always the excerpt, this first page. But when it comes back, when you're actually playing this piece, the second time is harder, it's higher, it's harder. Um, one of the things you need to try to do is put these grace notes later and closer to the main note. Instead of da da bum ba da bum. It's tempting to you want to take plenty of time to get down, but you really have to just as you would probably say it, right? I think we all know instinctively. Obvious, right? But it doesn't always come out. And the, the usual tendency is to just fall in out of just kind of tension and nervousness too early on these grace notes. So da da ba 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 putting them as late and fast as you can. You want to try them? Yeah. The first one? Yeah. Often done in my experience, at least, is Chen here? 
that you're in forte, for instance, if you're going to really let an open string ring like this in a chord or something, you don't want to do it in a softer dynamic. We are in a softer dynamic we're in here. Do you know the place that I'm trying to figure it out? Yes, at the end. Actually, at the end, I think there's one that you can't avoid. So that one you can finger. That one I would actually play. That's the exception to the rule. And I would just play it really, really nicely. Really, it's possible to play an open string and make it sound almost not like an open string. That's what I would do here, because it's it's better than crossing over for the one note in this case. But the one I'm talking about is closer to the beginning. That one. I did it twice in a row. Okay, and it really just jumped out of the texture. So there's no reason you can't play a finger E there, okay? So watch out for that. Um, you know, you have to make a, a good decision um, based on, is it if, is the open E, first is it just as easy not to play the open E, in which case don't play the open E. Then if, if, if it's really, really super awkward to not play the open E, then you might be justified in playing it, it's especially if it's in the middle of a fast passage where you know it's gonna make your fingering just really wild and crazy. Um, but anyway, not to talk about that. Um, after letter C, there are a few places where being in second position can really help you. <laughs>
very well done, very musical, um, lots of good, lots of good stuff happening here. One thing that, that I did notice that I think that could add to just elevate even further what we're already doing is just using a little more mode. Like you find that it, it seems to be a habit to not go more to the frog. Is that possible? Yeah. Yeah? I think you've heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when I start to notice something like that when somebody's playing, then I, I, I try to check myself when I'm thinking, is that really a habit or was that just, was that a decision? not to go all the way to the frog there at a place that I think, you know, maybe would be obviously wanting to use the whole bow. And so I did kind of find that um, it seems to be a little bit of a habit, was my impression. So the first place that it really jumped out at me was um, before number five. So I'll show you my thing right here. So right here, before this long, that when you're trying to sustain all the way here, and you only got to about this point right here. So can you try that for us somewhere? You can start anywhere you want here, maybe need to buy it again. And especially at that moment, you might even, um, if you start at four, just kind of think about getting to the frog, unless it doesn't make sense to you some more bow, but you'll open up your sound.
body quite naked, so I have to scoot over the rest of the way. But I find that that could also be a habit too, is just watch out for it. If you, you know, sense that you're doing that more time than you'd like to, you might just have to. The way to practice it would be do it slower. And keep the speed the same all the way. Instead of going quicker and slowing down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, then just an idea to throw out at you, um, which just something to think about. Yeah, 
I would maybe say you can even be to a bad measure. Okay, so I like that. I like that. So maybe not too soft here. After uh, this. Okay, then 
probably that's the whole thing overall is slower than you want to do it, but that's with more control. So somewhere in between. Wait, so is it like your approach to the top note that you're... You're going for the same kind of thing, basically, right? Where it's, mm -hmm. it's slowing down at the top, it's on purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or not, actually, no, it's not the same. It's more like, kind of like how maybe a vocalist would like come yes. into a note. Yes, 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 I love that. Yeah. How a vocalist would come into a note. Did everybody hear that? That's really, really important. Really important. Definitely. So, sorry. You can picture a vocal, yes. Absolutely. So if that's the sound you're going for, absolutely. But then like a string crossing. Like a really a string thing. crossing, yes. Yeah, try one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
real, very real. Um, and I did just one more thing about that. Um, one more shift. Great playing, excellent, bravo, thank you.